Hey guys, welcome back to another deck profile and today I'm going to be doing the standard Garmor deck that I talked about in a previous deck profile video. Um, and I just kind of want to show you guys what I came up with. So this deck, I would argue it's kind of budget just because majority of the cards in this deck are well below the $2 mark. There may be a couple like 5 or $7 cards, just kind of like there's 2VRs and the draw PGs, but um, other than that, like the deck is pretty easy to make. So if you're looking for a more budget gold paladin deck to make that's kind of competitive, this might be something you're looking into. So just get started. Starter is going to be Crimson Line Cook Kerf until we get Spring Breeze Messenger and all the other cool stuff that's coming out. So yeah, that's our starter. Moving on to the grade threes, we're going to have four copies of Great Civil Wolf Garmore because that is our main ride target. So Garmore's skill is uh, if your hand is one or less cards, all your rearards cannot be attacked and your opponent cannot retire them by card abilities. I mean, can come in handy, but having one card in hand is basically a death sentence. So, eh, right, anyways. The other skill is what's really cool. It's when it's placed on the Vanguard Circle, you counter blast one, and you look at the top three cards of the deck, pick one, call it, and the rest go to your bottom of your deck. Afterwards, you pick up to six units and they get 3k. So you're fixing your numbers, making, you know, hitting, hitting force numbers if you need to, and you're, you know, making a big, big boy field. That's basically it. So you keep riding Garmore over and over again, keep getting the effect off, you get Excel 2 markers to keep drawing. So you're drawing, building a board at the same time. So it's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Next up, four grade threes, the staple of staples, four copies of Battlefield Storm Sagamore. Sagamore is a great card. Can't see this thing leaving standard, to be honest. So it's van or rear when placed. Salt from hand, sorry. Uh, Salt blast one, draw a card, then call a card from the hand of rear circle. So you're proccing abilities that can only be called by card effects, so din drain. Um, it goes well when you're using Brennius or whatever its name is. Yeah, Brennius and um, making more feel before you're going into Garmore's skill. Um, drawing cards is always cool. So, you know, it's just basically help to help you build a board using your soul as a resource. And you don't really have to worry too much about using your soul. Uh, there's a lot of cards that use soul in, the, in this deck, but since you're writing over and over again, you have cards that move into the soul. It's pretty good. So definitely want to run for this card. And it makes a pretty good backup uh, Vanguard if you can't ride Garmore. So next up, running two copies of the VR, which is Blazing Lion Platinazzle. So Platinazzle is going for about like five bucks, I want to say. It's probably going to go down later. And maybe, maybe not. That's just my speculation. But pretty cheap card, and it's pretty good in this deck since uh, it doesn't require Ezels in the soul, it just requires grade threes. So its skill is Van Act, Counter Blast 1, you change the first drive check to look at the top two, call one, the other goes to the trigger zone. So you get to pick your triggers. And then if you have two or more grade threes in the soul, you can change the second or more drive checks. So since you are going to be riding Garmor over and over, since it has an all place ability and that's what you kind of want to do, late game, when you draw into Platinum, you can ride this and this can be your finisher. Uh, checking your drive check is always really good. So uh, we only need two just because we don't want to write it early and we don't have a lot of cards that have the Ezel ability or need Ezel as the Vanguard like, um, you know, Howl. So just the two work fine. So that's it for grade threes. Moving on to the grade twos, we're going to finally run four copies of Advance of the Black Chains Kaiden. So I'm actually really excited to run Kaiden because the card is great. I just can't run it in Ezel because I don't think there's enough room and it's not consistent enough in that deck to even warrant playing it. So what it does is when it's placed, uh, it doesn't have to be from hand, when it's placed on rear, you counter blast one and you discard a card from your hand. You go to the top three cards, call one, then you shuffle your deck, shuffle the other two back into your deck. Then if you have a uh, Stronghold of the Black Chains, Hoel on your board, you get to draw a card afterwards. So we're running for Kaiden, so we're running for Hoel. Same thing. 
So this is really good because it doesn't use soul, so it means you can keep using the counterblast uh, to build your board. Uh, Hoel makes numbers big, and this helps you draw cards and getting rid of the stuff in your hand you don't want to use. So, great card. Kaiden's great. Next up, we are running four copies of Player of the Holy Bow Dindrain. So this is your ride target when you're going into your grade two turn. So when it's placed on van or rear uh, from your hand, you can counter blast one, soul blast one, and then you look at the top three cards of your deck, call one from among them, and you put the rest on the bottom, and then this gets 3k. So it's good oh, when you're trying to build a board with Brennius into this, and then use Garmer's skill to make, you know, give more of a field more power. Uh, it's just fam spamming, spamming the board. It's good. And yes, it uses soul, and a lot of the cards like Sagamore and Dendrain use soul, but you kind of balance it out on what you need. This makes good discard fodder if you run out of soul with Kaiden's skill. And yeah, so this whole deck's purpose is about blowing up your board as much as you can and making a field. So Vivian helps you get there, and it's a good ride target. Lastly, for the grade twos, uh, we're running three copies of Golden Beast Rampage Turtle because Rampage Turtle has Battle Door skill, which is cool. So it's during your turn, or during the battle that attacked, sorry, uh, if you have more rear guards than your opponent, uh, when your opponent has to guard for this attack, it ha they have to choose two or more cards from their hand at a time. So since your field's going to be pretty much almost always full, you just get the turtle and you swing, and then they have to guard with two or more for that attack. It's also a high beast, and Garmore's thing is high beast in you know the past, so kind of following the theme there too. But other than that, it's really it's there for the guard restrict, and since you're going to be getting a lot of power and your field's going to be full, it makes sense to run turtle. And turtle's pretty cheap now. Now last I checked, it was like going for like two bucks or something. So get them turtles. Turtle's a good card. Next up, grade ones. So because we're running for Kaiden, we are running for Hoel. So Stronghold of the Black Chains Hoel. So Hoel's skill is during uh, continuous. So when your other unit is placed in the same column as this unit, that unit gets 5k, and if you have Kaiden on the board, it gets 10k instead. So this works great since you're riding over your grade threes over and over. You put this behind your Vanguard. Uh, you ride, and then the ridden unit gains 10k, so that can help, um, you know, if you have Kaiden on the field already. Uh, you put this in your other rearguard circle, intercept, call Kaiden, use Kaiden's skill to call something in front of it, that unit gains 10k. Combos really well with uh, Platinazzle too, because you can call over the unit that's in the same column as it. And if you have two in the same column, they give each other 10k. So, you know... Pretty dope. Uh, it kind of sucks when you don't see Kaiden just because the 5k is not that big a deal. But it can be if you have Turtle, but other than that, most other times it really doesn't make that big a difference. And so you want to make sure you have the 4 Kaiden and the 4 Hoel so you see them consistently together. Next up for Grade Ones, we're running four copies of Knight of Vitility. I can't read. So Knight of the Tilly Bernius. Uh, what this does is when your grade 3 or greater vanguard is placed, uh, you move this to the soul, draw a card, then call something from your hand to soul. So this is important because you combo this off with Garmore. So what you do is when you ride Garmore, you activate this first, move it to the soul, draw, then call something from your hand. Then after you finish calling and chaining off with like Sagamore and Vivian, you use your counterblast to use Garmore's skill since it's still on standby, since it was placed. And then you look at the top three, call something, and then the field that you build with Brennius and Sagamore and Vivian and whatever you use to build a board before using Garmore's skill, that'll all gain the 3k off of Garmore's effect. So Brennius is really good, fills the soul, um, wrong card, <laughs> fills the soul, prop gives you resources for Sagamore and Dindrain and Vivian, so want to run four of it. I don't really want to run anything else just because this is just so important for the soul. So I want to run four of it. It's also a standard deck, so the more more of a more consistency is better. Lastly, 
four copies of Listener Truth Tindering. Uh, I find myself countercharging more than counterblasting, and that's probably just because Vivian and Kaiden both cost counterblast and Garmer's counterblast as well. So to keep like the flow going, where you want to make a board every time, you need counterblast. So you're probably going to be using Dindrain's Soul Blast for countercharge more often. So Dindrain skills when it's placed by a card ability, you Soul Blast one. You can either draw a card or you can countercharge. And if you countercharge, you gain 3k. So yeah, Dindrain is a good card for sure. So that's it for great ones. Trigger lineup. Uh, this is definitely a front trigger deck, in my opinion. So I'm running eight fronts, four of which are Dondigal, and the other four are Greeting, Greeting, Greeting Drummer. Uh, I picked Dondigal because it's literally a silver wolf and, you know, great silver wolf car. Anyways, uh, old trigger art, old trigger art. This used to be a stand trigger, uh, aesthetic, nostalgia, etc. Front triggers are cool. Uh, front triggers are also cool because you can look at the top two with uh, Platinazzle skill and you're like, oh cool, front. My front row is basically pretty buffed. So I definitely like the fronts more. And four copies of Halo Shield Mark because uh, draw PGs and we don't want to use the grade one PG because it doesn't have a skill other than the PG skill and you need the draws, I'm not gonna lie. So Halo Shield Mark for sure is your go-to. Uh, this probably makes it not much of a budget deck, but I highly recommend if you're trying to get into Vanguard, get these first. Just these are so important to any deck that you're gonna make, even if you're playing like 12 click Grand Blue, you're gonna wanna pick these up eventually when your deck gets updated. Just get the, get the draw PGs. I think those are more priority than the VRs. Lastly, four heals, because we don't want to die. And they got big shield and healing is cool. So yeah, that is basically the deck profile. Um, I'll just talk about one quick thing is that uh, you can run crits. And the reason I say that is because you have um, this boy, Hoel. Hoel does help you get bigger numbers when you're constantly building your board. So that, that crit pressure could help, especially when you're Drive checking with Garmor first, and then you get the weaker columns first. Attack with Vanguard, get a crit, you put the grid on Van, put the power on a bigger column, help, you know, keep the pressure up. But uh, a front trigger kind of does the same thing too. If you're just kind of getting excels and you're constantly hitting with big numbers and your opponent has to lose their hand all the time. Uh, I'd say this deck's only issue is that if you are constantly looking at the top three cards and the other two are triggers, triggers and you keep putting them to the bottom, your triggers are going to end up on the bottom of your deck, which kind of sucks. And yeah, but fronts I would say is the safer bet to go. So yeah, that's basically it. Um, I definitely don't think this deck is as good as the Ezel deck just because of how fast the, that deck turbos. If once you go into Blonde, then Raven, then Platina, Raven hair is guard restrict and gains a crit, so that makes up for the, if you play fronts in that deck, it makes up for the lack of crits. And um, Garm Garmer's only effect is that it just gives you a board, so you really have to hope that you get fronts and poke your opponent constantly, and they can keep up with them to, you know, eventually beat their face in. But again, that's why these cards are so cheap, because, you know, not, not meta, but it's fun, and it's cheap, and if you want to play Gold Paladin, I do think this is a good variant to build if you're kind of on a budget, and you're kind of just want to wait for the Aggravain support to come out. This is a good deck to start with, and I think it's kind of fun. So I'll give you guys more updates in the future if you want of this deck's performance. I've yet to play test it in a tournament, and I might do that soon just because it's standard, and I just can play pretty much anything, and I think it'll be the same. So, yeah, that was the deck. Hope you all liked it, and I hope you all have a great day. See ya.